So how are we going to do it? Here's our setup, and let me pull this back a little ways. I said the reason we're doing this experiment, or the thing that we want to observe, is how much hydrogen gas is generated. But how do we determine how much hydrogen gas is generated? It's really convenient if we want to generate a gas, if we want to measure a gas, to collect that gas by displacing water. So we can use a graduated cylinder. In this case, we need a fairly large graduated cylinder. But how do we get this little magic trick to happen? I've got a couple of these set up over here already. How did I get those upside down? These are both full of water, and they're upside down, and they're not emptying up. Well, you've probably done this at the pool, but you didn't think about it in terms of a chemistry experiment. So if I take this graduated cylinder and I fill it up with water, one of the interesting and useful properties of water that we're going to exploit is surface tension. So if you fill it up, you can actually fill up the cylinder past the top of the container, right? Water heaps up a little bit. Why do we want to do that? Well, because now if you take something that's about the same size as the top of the graduated cylinder, and you very carefully put it over the top, I can turn this upside down and it's still full of water. I got no air bubbles in there. And if I put this under the surface of the water before I release it, it stays full of water. So there's our setup. By the end of the day, you're going to be experts at doing that. But it does take a little bit of practice. So there's where we're going to collect our gas. Now at this point, I should probably, again, do some thinking about the safety issues that are involved here. And I better get my goggles on. Also, as you notice, this experiment ends up spilling a lot of water around. That's part of the, part of the process, so we just have to deal with it. So, with my goggles on, now, how am I going to generate gas and get it in that graduated cylinder. In your drawer you should have a bunch of 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks and we want to set up our reaction in here and run the gas through this tube and collect it there. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well it is, but we've got to keep track of a few things. First of all, before you do anything, make sure that the stopper that you're using fits in the flask you're using. That sounds pretty basic, but some of the stoppers are a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, and some of the necks of the flasks are a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, so they don't always all fit. This one looks like it fits really well. So now I can start thinking about the experiment. So this is the flask I'm going to use. Here's my tube. We can go ahead and already snake this tube up into that inverted graduated cylinder. And again, I'm going to use some paper towels. Now, what do we need? We need aluminum. We need HCl. So I pre-weighed a couple little pieces of aluminum over here. So I'm going to use this one. And this one has a mass of... Point two six two grams. Now, as it says in your manual, you want a piece that's about 0.25 grams, but don't waste a lot of time getting exactly 0.25. As long as you know how much you have, you can figure out how many moles this is. So 0.262 was close enough for me. Let's get that in our reaction vessel. It's starting to get exciting. So now what? We've got the aluminum. What about the HCl? Well, here is 
5.02 molar HCl and I can measure that with a graduated cylinder. And again, it'd be nice if you were using exact amounts, but it's probably not the most crucial thing ever. So I've got 5.50 milliliters of HCl. These are the kind of things you want to be writing down in your lab notebook. Now before we get started with this, I'll take a little break so that I can get the fog out of my goggles. You're probably going to be doing this a few times today as well, so if they fog up, stop your experiments, step away for a second, clean them out, and now you're ready to go. Okay, so I've got my aluminum, I've got my hydrochloric acid. With two people, you and your lab partner, this is probably going to be even easier to do without too much delay. So add and get that stopper in there, get that stopper in there nice and tight. And nothing's happening. Why isn't anything happening? Something should happen, shouldn't it? Well, yes it should, but Patience is a pretty important thing when you're doing chemistry. One of the interesting things about aluminum is that it's a very reactive metal. It reacts with oxygen in the air pretty easily. And because it does that, it forms a little aluminum oxide coating on the aluminum foil that kind of serves the same purpose as paint would. So, how are we going to get this reaction to go? Fortunately, we've got acid in there. So, right now, all the while I've been talking, the hydrochloric acid that's in this experiment has been slowly eating away at the aluminum oxide coating, and eventually it's going to eat its way all the way through the aluminum oxide coating. So, it just takes a little bit of patience.